So it is going to come as a shock to absolutely no one when I say that game journalism has become a bit of a shit show doesn't go far enough. Catastrophe doesn't go far enough. You know, I don't really have any words to accurately describe how bad game journalism has become nowadays. It's an understatement to say it's an irredeemable fucking mess. And unfortunately, I've found the embodiment of everything wrong with video game journalism with this article about the Resident Evil 2 remake over at Waypoint and Vice. And right from the get-go, this thing lets you know exactly what you're in for and exactly what this person's malfunction is. Either way, the article is titled, I Wish Resident Evil 2 Let Me Be a More Compassionate Hero. Resident Evil 2 is a scary, effective fantasy of permission and scarcity, but I want to be a different kind of survivor. And right from the get-go, again, they're let... <sighs> What's wrong with this person and how they're looking at this uh, game and this story is immediately apparent. They are looking for things that are not there. They are looking for themes and undertones and subject matter that does not exist within the game. Resident Evil is a very simple fucking survival horror game. It is not a fantasy of permission and consent and scarcity and blah, blah, blah. No, it's a game about killing zombies and bioorganic weapons. That's it. If you are looking for anything more than that, you done fucked up already. But either way, this shit gets worse from here. Back to the article. I'm playing Resident Evil 2 for the first time. Well, mostly. Back in 1998, my 14-year-old self scoured the pages of a Tips and Tricks magazine walkthrough of the game, covering every gameplay beat and plot point. And I played a few minutes of it on a friend's PlayStation 1, so I'm familiar with the scenery and structure, the quests and characters, but this is the first time I've truly experienced it. <sighs> they, they haven't played the fucking game, so they had no idea what the fuck they were going to be getting into when they went into it. You can only learn so much by reading a goddamn walkthrough magazine. Those old strategy guides told you something about the plot, not all of it, because there still needs to be a reason for you to play the fucking game. So, they're going into this thinking that, you, again, they have no real guidance about what this is going to be. And given that they haven't even played Resident Evil 2, which was re-released on the N64, and I think the PlayStation 2 at one point, and the PC, and the fucking GameCube... There's no fucking excuse for not playing it. They've had more than enough fucking time, which makes me wonder if they're even a goddamn gamer at all. Either way, it's scary and tense and very much a period piece. A late 90s survival horror game, well, at least you got the fucking genre, right? Set squarely in... No... Uh, Set squarely in the later Clinton era with dollar gallons of gas and chunky computers. I was actually more impressed by the fact that they had cigarettes for $1.26 or some shit in that game. But either way, now boasting some modern design niceties, playing on normal, <laughs> I can save as many times as I'd like, and the cutscenes and visuals are prettied up to Resident Evil 7 standards. And that's about as in-depth as they go into an actual review of the game itself. But one thing that's sticking out to me still early on in the police station, I mean, you haven't fucking finished the fucking game and yet you're writing the goddamn article, is how perfectly the game uses scarcity and this fantasy of hyper-competence, something not exactly rare to gaming, is <clears throat> to make me feel a certain way how much permission it gives me to be a total solipsistic solip fucking stop humping the thesaurus the lone survivor type okay there was a couple of other survivors but i need not interact with them in terribly complex ways or deal with the politics of survival and we're going to get into more of that later how the fantasy here pretend presents an uncomfortable tension between the ways I want to role play in this world versus the way the game requires me to play to make it through the night. Again, role play, role play, role play. That's what the no, there. It's not a role playing game. It's a survival horror game. It's a game where you shoot zombies. This nonsense about permission and the the politics of survival. 
you are looking way too deeply into this fucking game. This is just your Trump derangement syndrome bullshit seeping up to the fucking surface and trying to once again find shit that isn't there. It's a game about putting bullets in zombies. That's it. But more on this later. As I stalk the halls of the station, dressed as they are in intermittent fluorescent lights and weird sepia tones of an old museum, I'm vulnerable. I don't have many bullets to protect myself with. I have far fewer healing items. Zombies are tough. Even on normal, they take multiple headshots and they often don't stay down because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. I have to raid this place to survive by looking in lockers, desks, in weird corners and dark cabinets, and I'm collecting all kinds of things. Bullets, sure, but also gunpowder and knickknacks to solve puzzles, keys, crappy boards to slam onto windows and keep the riffraff out, as the item's tooltip tells me. At first, I oddly felt a little weird taking things. The... Oh, Jesus Christ... The station was designated as a shelter during the zombie outbreak. There are cots and bloody sheets, IV stands, boxes of food and medical supplies everywhere. Early on, protagonists Claire and Leon hear a radio message instructing all citizens to head for the station. <sighs> and this is where it gets absolutely fucking terrible. That notion is wild. The police station, as fortress slash safe haven, is laughably naive, particularly for people of color. It certainly was in the late 90s as well, and really, when, what ha when has policing in America ever actually been about keeping neighborhoods safe, as opposed to keeping a racial status quo up and running? Though the game does later connect the upper echelons of the police management with the evil, shady doings of the Umbrella Corporation, whose undecidedly unethical bioweapons research started the whole zombie apocalypse in the first place. Not an apocalypse, just one city, idiot. I still feel a little bad looting the place at at least at first, since this is the staging area for what we in EMS call a mass casualty incident. So, of course, I went in thinking like an EMT. That's your first fucking problem. You went in thinking about this game like yourself, like the real world. You're not, even by their role-playing definition that they wanted to do, they're not putting themselves in the fucking shoes of the character, which is, you know, necessary for role-playing. But, you know, fuck it. <sighs> Loosen your grip on reality for five minutes and understand that this game is about escapism. Understand that the vast majority of entertainment is about escapism. Getting away from your world, getting involved in another one, getting interested and invested in another world, another problem that cannot exist in our own world. I'm sorry, as much as I want it to, there's not going to be zombies popping up and there's not going to be liquors and tyrants fucking running around. Trust me. And shit would be a lot more fucking entertaining than our current fucking lives. But it's a fantasy. Focus on the fantasy. Stop fucking thinking about the rest of this bullshit. Either way. So of course I went in thinking like an EMT, looking for survivors to help. Like the nice dude who saved me from a faulty door, Marvin, who is clearly suffering from some kind of awful wound. I want to help him. Claire wants to help him too, exclaiming that we need to get him to the hospital, but he refuses. And the game doesn't give me any tools for mending wounds or even putting gauze or bandages on something. The only first aid item are hilariously magical herbs and sprays, though the guns and blood look, well, more or less like the actual thing. This is a game about dealing and surviving damage, not healing it. And after a while, I subtly give in to its goofy logic. Yeah, good, good. It's what you should have been doing from the start. It's a video game. It's a game that has a fucking plot laid out for you, a path laid out for you that you have to follow. There's obstacles in your fucking way. Sorry if a fucking game that's whipped together in a couple of years doesn't have the freedom of something like The Witcher uh, 3, which had, God, I don't even know, fucking decades worth of fucking development put into it. Again, I, I, this game was probably slapped together in two, three years, in all honesty. So, yes, because it's a remake of a game that you're already not very fucking familiar with, it's not going to let you do anything and everything you want. You're going to be following in the footsteps 
that the game wants you to fucking follow in order to complete it. This is basic fucking shit that you should have learned from your first time playing a video, video game. But these game journalists can't seem to get this fucking point through their damn head. And their unfamiliarity with all this, because all they did was read a Tips and Tricks magazine about Resident Evil 2 back in the day and play a couple of minutes of it, shows that again, Marvin is bitten in the game. There's no helping him. Just looking at the discoloration on him, which since you're fucking EMT, you should probably fucking realize, he's beyond help. Dude lost like 10 fucking shades of goddamn skin. To, he's fucking dead, Okay. The fact that he survives as long as he does in the game actually is, is, you know, if you're an EMT, should also be one of those little things that's triggering your immersion. But back to the article. Yes, I absolutely need this green plant because seven more zombies will try to eat my face before I'm done on this floor. Yes, I definitely need this personal locker combination because I need that ammo. It's clear that I'm the only real agent in this world. It's designed, it's been designed around me, my needs. Yes, because it's a video game. So I have permission to loot and run, just mashing the X button to try and drive by, pick up items. There's no one else here, really. It's a world all for me, and I'm allowed to do anything I goddamn well please to treat it like my own shitty playground. No, I need to treat it that way in order to progress, and I'm morally allowed to because I'm not hurting anyone else. Anyone who is alive, anyway, because scarcity doesn't affect anyone else in this world. Does it matter to Marvin or Leon, for that matter, during my Claire playthrough, if I use every healing item on myself? Nope. If I barely have a scratch on me, I can still walk right up to where Marvin is, bleeding out his abdomen, and spray myself with magical healing green shit with no consequences. I can use every bullet for myself. I am the only thing I need to worry about for much of the game. I know there's a side quest later on that complicates this, but for now on, it's just another thing I'm permitted to be. Selfish. But, you know, keeping with their logic, let's go ahead and, you know, play a little fucking game here. Let's go ahead and say that, yes, Leon could come in later on and pick up some of these items and whatnot that Claire didn't go ahead and pick up. Well, if this person bothered to go ahead and play the B campaigns, which, you know, take place where if you're playing Claire, you play through what Leon went through during that time. If you're playing as Leon, you go through what Claire went through at that time. You would see that there's still shit there. That Claire didn't pick up everything. That Leon didn't pick up everything. There's still more shit in that police station than you picked up. But again, you would actually have to play the game to understand this. So again, th and this is purely playing devil's advocate and using their own logic as the basis here. You already fucked up your own goddamn argument. Because you didn't play the fucking game before you wrote the article. I'm also not really allowed to do anything I please, as the verbs are pretty limited. I wanted to play with all the food items in the store in the opening gameplay scene. Look at all the goofy fake labels and such, like I do in Life is Strange or A Walking Sim. And there's your fucking problem. They're just like every other goddamn game journalist. They've never played a real game before. But that's a very different point of permission fantasy. What the fuck is this permission fantasy shit? Seriously, what the fuck does this even mean? You're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want in a video game, yes. Because it's a game. None of those people are real. You are not need to be placing the same importance on those people as you would a real fucking person in the real world. It is nice, yes, when a game like, you know, Witcher 3, Planescape Torment... Chrono Trigger, some of the greatest RPGs ever made, just going straight to the top of the list here. Make you feel enough about these characters, make you feel invested enough about them that you do want to go ahead and think about, you know, their better, their their safety. But at the end of the day, they're just code. They are just things on a screen. They're pixels. Okay? Stop fucking worrying about non-existent people in a game as if they were real people. Stop thinking too fucking deeply about it. Either way, either way, back to the shit show. But that's a very different sort of permission fantasy, isn't it? The ability to touch and play with so many aspects of a world with no angry shopkeeper staring at me with my now very obviously queer haircut. But, uh, 
But here I am limited to and encouraged to engage in a whole bunch of antisocial behaviors. Stealing shit. Shooting antagonists in the face. Stabbing them. Yeah, because they're trying to fucking kill you. They're zombies. They don't have a... Br it's not antisocial. They don't have any fucking social... Oh my god, I can't believe I'm arguing this fucking point. It's a zombie. It's a fucking zombie. Get the fuck over this shit. And no, this design paradigm is not new. This is a survival horror game. Doing competently and even well. Again, the closest they get to an actual fucking review... The kinds of things the genre is good at. It's not making me feel powerful so much as hyper-competent and allowing me to do bad things. Self-defending yourself from fucking brainless monsters is not bad. It's not a bad thing. It's a terrible world, and I have to survive. Resident Evil 2 put me in this mindset inside of its first hour from the sort of player who usually loves to admire every tiny detail and art, art, art asset to a grabby, selfish, grizzled jerk. Not even Alien Isolation did that for me. I stopped playing this game like an EMT, and I, the way I started, concerned about medical supplies and, for, and survivors, and started playing more like a lone commando, the asshole who lives to fight another day. Me versus the fucking cry me a goddamn river. You overdramatic piece of shit. This motherfucker is acting like they got goddamn PTSD from a motherfucking video game. <sighs> the character designs support this too. I'm playing as Claire right now, a white chick in a leather jacket who open carries a sidearm everywhere she goes just on an average day. Not for a special occasion like the day hell broke loose on Raccoon City. Claire probably tried brings her trusty sidearm to get her hair cut. It's not. It's just who she is. And as she remarks to Marvin early on, I can take care of myself. She can. Claire has obvious combat training and handles herself well. Well, She's a leather-clad, motorcycling, oh-so-90s badass woman. The kind I, frankly, often enjoy playing as. In real life, I carry... Going back to that shit. Going back to that shit. <sighs> I can't believe I have to fucking explain this. The game designers are not going to bother modeling Claire's pants twice to fit the fact that she has her fucking gun on her hip. And even then, pretty sure the fucking people in Japan who made this game don't know the intricacies of open carry laws in an imaginary state that's never really specified. Like they never say ra ra where Raccoon City really is. They just say Midwest America. So, you know, who, why the fuck do you care? Oh, right, they're a fucking NPC. But then we get back to the heart of the fucking problem with this thing. In real life, I carry a tourniquet, exam gloves, and gauze everywhere I go. Good for you. Good for you. I keep a little kit right in my real-life purse... Oh, so you do know the difference between real life and fucking fantasy. Then why the fuck are you written this article? Why the fuck are we here? Why the fuck did you waste everybody's damn time with this piece of shit if you already know the difference between real life and fantasy? Ugh. I keep a little kit right in my real life purse just in case I need to help someone. Good Again, good for you. I've had to use it before, the gloves and gauze anyway, as a passerby to an assault. I've, thankfully, never needed to use my supplies in a zombie outbreak. Not yet. But I'd like to think, in my heart of hearts, I'd be a different kind of survivor than Claire or Leon and really allowed to be, are really allowed to be, in Resident Evil 2. Ugh. I need another fucking cigarette for this shit. Okay. As I've said many, 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 many times before throughout this fucking thing, this idiot, and this has gone on way too long already, this idiot doesn't know the difference between fantasy and reality. They are looking way too deeply into this shit. The problem with every fucking game journalist... Mm. And this, this, this article is just an ego trip. They don't... They talk about the game for like maybe three fucking sentences about how the game is actually, you know, good, does it have good graphics, is the combat good? Three fucking sentences throughout this entire goddamn article, which was probably like 10, 12 fucking paragraphs. I didn't fucking count, okay? The entire thing is an ego trip. The, the, the entire last paragraph is just them patting themselves on the back about how much better they are than these fictional fucking characters who are locked in a goddamn nightmare, 
Okay. I'm pretty fucking sure, bitch, if you were put in that fucking scenario that they were in, you would be hogging every goddamn bullet you could too. You would be hogging every fucking medical supply you could too. I can't believe I'm fucking thinking like this. Put yourself in their position. It's a video game. Why, why, why do these people make me think such stupid shit? Put yourself in their position. Okay. Since you, since you are so obsessed with role playing. If you had saw like no one around and you saw this one dude, again, you're an EMT. You can see that Marvin is far, way too far gone. Whatever the fuck you find is not going to help that dude. You do not have fucking, you know, uh, the shit to do a blood transfusion on this dude. Okay. You do not have a fucking surgical room to fix up the fucking bite. You don't have a cure for the fucking T virus. And if they bothered to pay attention to the lore already set in place within that game, they'd fucking know this shit. But because they want to sit and talk about realism and fantasy and permission fantasy and role playing, which again requires you to forget about the real world and implant yourself into a fictional one. They can't even live up to their own fucking standards and their own fucking criticisms. This whole art. Oh, fuck it. I hate game journalists. I hate game journalists so much. Either way, either way, this shit's gone on way too long already. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing on up. Let me know what you think about this fucking festering pile of I don't even know anymore. Game journalism needs to just stop. Reboot the entire fucking thing. Vice is... I don't have words. Cancer. Nonsense. Take your fucking pick. Vice is terrible. Waypoint is terrible. Kotaku is terrible. Polygon is terrible. IGN nowadays is fucking terrible. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Huge thanks to all the people who support the channel on Patreon. You guys keep things going here. And until next time, pray for my fucking sanity if I have to read another goddamn article like this. Remember to have fun, take it easy, and for the love of God, let's make entertainment great again because this shit, this shit needs to stop. Go play Resident Evil 2 and have fun.